So, hello again. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about the structure of biological membranes, membrane structure. Now, in the previous videos, we already looked at a whole bunch of different cell organelles and also at the plasma membrane. You know that there are all of those structures in a cell and many of them um, are made of membranes or contain a membrane. And uh, we're going to look at, have a closer look at the membrane uh, today. Now, um, what I've done here is I've already prepared three little drawings and a biological membrane is made up of the, those three components mostly. And uh, we're going to have first, uh, I'm going to give you an overview of what they are. Then later on, um, I'm going to draw a membrane and I would also recommend that you copy the drawing. And uh, yeah, so let's get started. So this uh, one over here, um, this funny little structure here is called a phospholipid. Okay, and that is uh, essentially um, a very central uh, building block of a membrane or component of a membrane. We're going to have a close look at it later. And now there are a variety of different uh, shapes and forms um, of proteins. That's the second uh, part uh, that the membrane is made of. And as a matter of fact, um, the presence or absence of certain proteins and the type of proteins that are present determine also what a membrane is able to do. Okay, so there are many, many different proteins around um, and we're going to have also a separate video. I'm going to make a separate video where I'm going to look at the different uh, functions of membrane proteins. And last but not least, this uh, funny substance here made of four rings is cholesterol. I have to be honest with you, it's drawn way too big. Okay, it's much, much smaller than this compared to the phospholipids and the proteins, much smaller. So when I'm going to, when I make the drawing of a membrane later on, I'm just going to draw the cholesterol as a, maybe, maybe like this. Okay. <laughs> as a little line, yeah? So this is going to be the way that I'm gonna draw it simply because uh, otherwise the proportions are, are not correct, okay? So um, before um, I draw the membrane, um, let's have a closer look at a phospholipid, okay? Um, and uh, why it looks the way that it does. And for this reason, I'm going to erase this here. Okay, let's erase this here again and let's have a closer look at this phospholipid. The phospholipid is made of, of two parts here. There is a circle up here and this circle is not a, a circle. We don't call it circle. We call it, it's a phosphate group and it's called the phosphate head um, of, the, of the phospholipid. And here, those two squiggly lines here are quite flexible. Uh, these are so-called fatty acid tails. Yeah, phospholipids are lipids. They're special kinds of lipids. And uh, yeah, therefore, because they're lipids, they also have fatty acids. But instead of triglycerides, which have three fatty acid tails, separate video, separate topic, um, those phospholipids only have two fatty acid tails. Yeah? And uh, this gives uh, the uh, phospholipids a certain important characteristics. Namely, the phosphate head is hydrophilic. And hydrophilic means that um, it is soluble in water. So it likes to be there where there is water. And the fatty acid tails are fatty, as the name says, and fat and water don't mix. They do not like water. And therefore the fatty acid tails are referred to as, as hydrophobic. So hydrophilic means, hydro means water. Hydrophilic means water loving. Hydrophobic means afraid of water. So the heads, they like water and the tails are afraid of water. And uh, there are yeah substances uh, that are ba basically both. On one end hydrophilic, on the other hand they are hydrophobic. And those substances have a special name. The name is the following. These substances are called as amphipathic. Okay. So these are substances or chemicals that are both hydrophilic and hydrophobic. You might want to note that down. Okay. These substances, amphipathic substances, are hydrophilic and hydrophobic um, yeah, at the same time on different parts of, of the molecule. Yeah? And when we now um, understand this, then we also understand much better of why a membrane looks the way it looks. Okay, So I'm going to remove all of those labels again, and I'm going to now start drawing a biological membrane and uh, with a lot of phospholipids and a few proteins as well. So how am I going to do that? Um, what I'm going to do is I need to draw this a little bit smaller. And uh, it is going to take us some time now. Uh, I'm going to, usually what I do is, is I draw the phospholipid heads first. Okay, so this is a head here. Make sure that the phospholipid heads touch each other. Some people, they leave too much space. No, no, they should be packed together quite closely. So I'm going to draw the three of them here. I'm going to draw three of them over here. And now I'm going to draw the phospholipid tails. And instead of drawing a squiggly line, what I do is, is I like to draw two straight lines but they should not touch each other, okay? They shouldn't touch each other, yeah? So what you see over here is um, a so-called a phospholipid bilayer. 
bilayer means two layers of phospholipids. And now I'm going to draw a protein. And look, the protein yeah, goes, in this case, all the way through the phospholipid bilayer. And I'm going to continue to draw phospholipids on the other side here. Okay, like this. So, you know what, I'm going to draw another phospholi uh, another protein. In this case, uh, uh, this uh, protein that I draw has a little hole yeah, in the center. So I'm going to draw this very closely together. There's a little gap in the middle, okay? So that's also a possibility, okay? Uh, I'm going to draw again a few of these uh, phospholipid heads. I'm going to draw a little bit faster now, okay? Because otherwise you might get become impatient with me. Okay, and look um, again, a protein here. This way, time it doesn't go all the way through. Well, maybe I'm just going to draw a few of these heads first. And another thing, look, I'm going to draw a protein outside here as well. Yeah, you get the idea. Um, you can draw whatever you want. Okay, and you know what? Over here, I'm going to draw another protein and I'm going to draw a sugar chain here. This is supposed to be a sugar chain. Okay, sometimes it can branch off even. Yeah? And you get the idea, okay? You can continue draw here. So that is basically um, what I'm going to uh, leave it at right now because now I'm going to start labeling it, yeah? So I, I already mentioned that this one over here is a phospholipid bilayer and I just see that hmm, I forgot to print a label. So we have to do it by hand. And um, this is a bilayer, bilayer. Okay, of phospholipids. And uh, what we now have is we see that there are uh, different types of proteins now in this bilayer. And those proteins, they have um, yeah, certain names. So you see this protein over here on the outside? Yeah? Um, it's not embedded in the bilayer. Um, and therefore, it's called a so-called a peripheral protein. Peripheral means on the side. So I'm going to label this here. It's the peripheral protein. And then you have uh, proteins that are embedded in the phospholipid bilayer, like those over here um, and those over here. Yeah? This one as well. And those proteins that are embedded are known as so-called integral proteins. Yeah, they're integrated in the membrane. Huh? Um, and they do different functions. Let's move it over a little bit here. Yeah? They do different functions uh, depending on, on, on what the membrane has to do. Yeah? The, this uh, protein over here is, of course, uh, also an integral protein because it goes uh, through the bilayer. Uh, but it has a, a specific function. It could be a channel protein allowing substances to go through or it could also be a pump protein which uses energy to pump substances through. You see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove now this uh, the heading over here. I'm going to put it up here, maybe. Yeah, and these are so-called channel proteins or pump proteins. Okay, here, here we go. I'm going to remove it all together. You get the idea. Okay, so these are channel or pump proteins, uh, and uh, they allow substances uh, to go through, either passively by uh, diffusion, facilitated diffusion, or by using energy. And then you remember this uh, sugar chain over here that I had? Well, um, proteins that have a sugar chain are referred to as glycoproteins. Yeah, so, well, these are, that's the sugar chain, but uh, actually it's a sugar, let's label it sugar chain. But the actual protein, I should actually label, uh, I see, I, now, now you can read it. Yeah, the glycoprotein is, is, is over here. So this is basically, uh, yeah, that's basically the, a drawing of a, of, of a membrane. Uh, so we can add the thing here again. The, yeah. This is uh, the drawing of a membrane. And uh, one thing that you have to be really um, careful about is this is only a two-dimensional cross-section. Of course, it's like a membrane is like a sheet, okay? So it's like a sheet. And we're just looking at it uh, from, from the side. I don't know if I have something here. I'm going to use my mobile phone here as an example. It's my mobile phone. Yeah, so the, if you think that this is the membrane, we're looking at it um, uh, on the side here. Okay, yeah, um, only the cross section. Yeah? So for example, this could be the inside of the membrane or the outside of the membrane is the inside of the cell, for example. Yeah? And then substances can go through um, the channel protein. Yeah? And, but uh, again, we're looking at it uh, yeah, from, from the edge here, in the edge onwards from the side. Yeah? But in reality, of course, it's a sheet, it's a three-dimensional structure. So the, the name of this type um, of membrane, um, yeah, there is a, a, an important name here. It's known as the fluid mosaic membrane. Yeah, so I, I write it down here, fluid it mosaic membrane model. And uh, maybe uh, if you paid very close attention, you're going to say, hmm, but you forgot something. 
<laughs> I did forget to draw something. <laughs> yeah, I did forget to draw something. Okay, what is it? Remember, what are the three parts of a membrane? Phospholipids, proteins, and and what's the third one? Cholesterol, remember? <laughs> I, I forgot to, to include the cholesterol here. And the cholesterol is very hydrophobic and the cholesterol is embedded between, over here, between the tails. So maybe this is the cholesterol over here. I'm gonna draw it over here on the side. Yeah, and then maybe up here. Yeah, so you have to label cholesterol. And I just realized here, where is my cholesterol label? Ah, here it is, here it is, haha. <laughs> yeah. This is my cholesterol. And so I have to label this here also as cholesterol, okay? Um, so you see it's embedded um, in the, between the phospholipid tails, yeah, the cholesterol, cholesterol. And what the cholesterol does is it adjusts the fluidity of the membrane. <laughs> Yeah, it's a fluid mosaic model. It means that the proteins and the phospholipids, they can move around um, in the membrane. So it's like a liquid. Yeah, And uh, the cholesterol, therefore, is really important to adjust the fluidity of, of the membrane. Yeah? How liquid is it? That's number one. And number two, because it is very hydrophobic cholesterol, okay, it's very, very hydrophobic. Uh, therefore, um, it does not uh, allow certain hydrophilic substances to go through as easily. So, so those substances, they have to go through a channel protein. Yeah? So um, you see that cholesterol plays a very important uh, role um, in the biology of living things because uh, it adjusts uh, the structure and the fluidity of the membrane and also um, uh, controls or adjusts also what is able to go through the cell membrane directly and kind of forces other substances therefore to go through a channel protein. Yeah. So this is basically um, uh, the important, uh, yeah, all of the important uh, parts um, of a biological membrane, at least of the fluid mosaic model. Yeah, I, I, for sake of completion, I do have to say it's also known as the Singer-Nicholson model. Um, and because there is a separate uh, second membrane structure, a uh, slightly outdated one that I'm going, going to also talk about uh, in um, a different video. But for right now, um, yeah, if you are able to um, put this into your notebook, uh, then I think... Uh, you already know quite a bit uh, about membranes if you're able to draw and label it right out of your head. So see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.